when you design a test team, you need to at least think of plans B and C when you think of it, when you start building a team. You can't just imagine everything will go perfectly well and everything is going great and you only need to worry about plan A and everything else will work from there. A good team needs to have plans B and C built into their squad and so when you're in Australia the two obvious situations that you would be facing are a very fast and bouncy pitch that um, has bundled out a number of your wickets and so there are two likely situations when you're in Australia in this current era that would make England be in big trouble and they would have to go they would have to abandon their plan A and go to plan B and C so the first is if they're batting now you imagine a very flat wicket and you've got Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood bowling very fast and swinging the ball and they bundle out a number of English batsmen through just superb bowling and England are 5 for 50 and the question is in that situation does England have the lower order batting capable of rebuilding and counter-attacking and stopping the bleeding now with Johnny Bairstow you could say yes but with Ben Stokes and Moeen Ali and Stuart Broad and Roland Jones the answer would be no because they haven't have a proven record of being able to counter attack and defend and rebuild and so there's no sense that they would be able to do the job of launching a plan B revival and the other situation would be if England are bowling there's a pitch, it's so flat, there's no swing or no seam, no pace for the bowlers. It's just comfortable, easy pace, and you've got batsmen like David Warner and Steve Smith just stroking through the line of the ball and scoring it four and a half runs and over, and they're one for 200. In that situation, you need to bring in either a seam bowling to bowl stump to stump, or spinners to try to control the game, stop the flow of runs, slow down the run rate, and start to build, rebuild up some pressure to get some wickets. And so it's not a matter of bowlers having a lot of... And so this is when a real bowling attack is tested, because it's not just about what you do in your four first... It's not what you just do in your first spell that matters. It's what you do in your second and third and fourth spells that really makes you a great bowler. And so the question would be, does an English bowling attack have the capacity to launch some sort of revival like that, where you stop the bleeding of runs by cutting out the bad balls, making a more defensive field, shutting off the boundaries, putting the batsmen more under pressure. And the answer to that is, is no as well, because Moeen Ali is not capable of holding a batsman in the same way that Nathan Lyon is and Stuart Broad and James Anderson are not capable of long second and third spells that could really shut down an innings the same way that a Josh Hazelwood or a Peter Siddle could and so what in, and Ben Stokes certainly couldn't do that Ben Stokes is too erratic and wild and so who in the English bowling attack could possibly shut down an Australian aggressive batting innings and the answer is no one, unless James Anderson somehow pulls out some sort of magic and bowls a really long spell. It doesn't look like England have the tools necessary to keep themselves in the game and to bring themselves back into the game when things go wrong. It seems to be a, a it seems to be a lineup that has a primary goal, a 
primary plan, and that's all they're going to care about. And I tell you, Joe Root is, for a, is in for a world of pain if he thinks that Plan A will be sufficient to beating Australia in Australia. What we saw last summer with South Africa when they beat Australia 2-1 was that it is capable, it is possible to beat Australia in Australia, but you have to really work for it, you have to work out some new plans, you have to figure out the problems that it, you're being faced with, and to really come up with new ideas. And Faf Du Plessis was able to do that, and his great praise and success came from his captaincy in able to marshal his troops to launch and to feel these put these out and to actually work out the right way to win against Australia. Now that was partly due to Faf Du Plessis' amazing captaincy and partly due to the tools that the South African team had at their disposal. And the question is, will Joe Root be able to do something similar or will he just be doing a repeat of what Alastair Cook did four years ago where he was just powerless to face this unstoppable force of an Australian team going at full throttle. I can't see Joe Root being able to stop an Australian team when it is going fully guns blazing in both 